Hello, I'm Tony Ann Hughes. Five years ago, a um, lady became eligible for benefits and she claimed benefits under domestic violence rules. Um, she's working, but she had top up benefits to help with the rent and two children. And after three years, um, DWP went in and fiddled on the computer, tippy tap, tippy tap, and decided to change the date she was eligible for benefits and reclaimed five years of benefits. Sorry, five months of benefits, I will put that correct. And threw her £7,000 into debt. Um, and four or five days later, we put together the case proving she was entitled to benefits, that this was completely made up. And we put in our mandatory consideration with all the evidence, letter from the Home Office proving that she was entitled to benefits. And we heard nothing for a year. Um, anyway, you, you know, then there was a mandatory reconsideration, which was done on Easter Saturday on overtime by somebody getting a bonus, I guess. Um, anyway, a bit of over, you know, a bit of extra money. But they rejected the case, but changed the amount of debt from seven from seven thousand three hundred and ninety pounds to five thousand and seven. But they didn't tell DWP Debt Recovery, who continued taking. Um, 81 and 93 pound a month and this lady was sent into poverty and she got uh, um, then she got a rent increase which was way above what the local housing allowance was but uh, and she negotiated it down to you know down a hundred pounds a month and then she got a 56 day notice to quit so she became homeless legally homeless and then DWP um well sorry, sorry she had to move house right cost her thirteen hundred pound a month instead of a thousand a month and that's not covered by DWP because they put a cap on at nine twenty five. So well, even though she in fact she works she can work extra hours but they take all that fifty five percent of it back after tax and after national insurance. So she's working for three pounds an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. So she works for ten pound fifty, but DWP take, you know, well, HMRC take tax, then National Insurance take National Insurance, and then DWP take fifty five percent. Anyway, um, and this goes on, and we put in, you know we raise a tribunal case and DWP failed to respond in the correct amount of time. And then we escalate it to the judge for a direction. So the judge sends a letter to DWP and they put up the white flag and say, oh no, you're entitled to those benefits all the time. Well, they had her money for two years almost. Um, so we thought, oh yeah, they'll stop sorting this out now. Well, we put a message on the journal of Universal Credit, no reply. Or then we put a, a much more pointed message on the journal, and they just gave a wrong reply, saying, oh, you can claim court costs from the court tribunal. Well, that's not what we're after. We're after the £1,518 back. So we escalated this to DWP complaints and they've got three working, well, they've got 15 working days, which is three weeks to reply um, or to ring you up, to ask for extra time, right? Well, we did sort of have a result. No, no reply, we actually brought no reply, but they put 1,500, and 18 pounds back into a bank account. But no compensation whatsoever for having her money for the last two years. Um, 
no compensation for throwing her into poverty. And she actually missed her dad's funeral because she was, you know, in so much financial debt because of all of the fiasco. So we have effectively one part of this case. After two years, virtually, you know, um, no apology, no interest, no compensation for uh, loss of uh, amenity of that money. Um, absolutely appalling behaviour by DWP. Nothing is done on time, nothing is done correctly. So anyway, this is the latest update to the Balamina fraud case. And the reason I'm calling it Balamina fraud case, I may have forgotten to say, was all of this started with the Balamina office, right? Who basically conjured up a case um, out of nothing. Again, though, they may have been given a lead, right? So roughly the day this started, Rishi Sunak issued a press release, right? Rishi Sunak and the Cabinet Office, right, this is all under the control of the Cabinet Office, employed fraud experts, right? A unicorn f company, this is the words from their press office, press release, um, they employed this firm called Quantexia, to look and cross-match data on DWP records, immigration dates, taxi licenses, everything you deal with with the council. So if you apply for a council tax discount, if you apply for a bus pass, anything, they are cross-matching and they are using AI, the magical AI, um, to basically look for any error. And the errors are always in DWP's favour. There's never AI has found a fault and we should have paid you more benefit. I can tell you that, right? Or we should have given you a council tax discount because you're disabled or you're on your own. You know, you should have had a 25% discount. This is, and now they want to look in your bank accounts. You see, this is part of what I've been saying in my other news stories, right? AI is for the government to take some money away from you, right? Whether you've, you know, whether it's your pension, you know, anything like that, they are using this against you, right? Now, AI, if you put the wrong question in to an AI machine, you'll get the wrong answer, right? So you can look at the, I mean, this case, right? This lady, she correctly was awarded benefits by the Secretary of State using laws, right? The Secretary of State has, under the 71 Immigration Act, the right to change somebody's immigration status. And whilst the Home Office is making a decision on um, a leave to remain application, the previous status continues, right? These are bits of law. And context here just asks the question, when did people get leave to remain and when were they claiming benefits? And Quantexia were asking the question, they're probably the question that they were asked to ask, and they came up with a list of people. And that's a, that may be how this case started. But the trouble is that DWP Balamina are supposed to check the facts before they start taking money off it, off you. They are um, basically were given the facts by our uh, mandatory reconsideration, and they ignored it, right? They just said, well, well, the the tech unicorn says that you're a fraudster, and we're going to take money off you. They then transmitted that fraud to DWP Debt Recovery. So this is Fraud Act Section 2, that they've put up some false information, they've transmitted the false information to another party, Fraud, DWP fraud, um, D, sorry, correction, DWP debt recovery, then they've taken 18 counts of fraud where they've wrongly taken money, and then they told the court that they sorted it all out and it was all perfect, so the court 
stop the tribunal case. That could be another count of fraud. Um, and then only when we started banging on the door, complaining, did they give her back £1,500. But the trouble is that in that meantime, they have cost us so much money and cost us so much hardship. We are not going to give up on this case. DWP, we're coming after you, all right? Anyway, time Tony. This is quite a story and it's not going to end. So I'm Tony Ant News, signing out. Politics of existing.